kid You've been doing what you did When the principal asked you what you were going to do You said you were going to be an artist Hi, my name is Dr. David Sherman. I'm, I'm a cardiologist. I was young, I liked to do like portrait puzzles, I liked to read detective stories to figure out what's going on based on all the clues. I never really liked to fix things, I sort of like to figure out things with my mind and that's what I do. When someone comes in to, to see me now, they don't come in telling me I have this problem, fix it. They say I feel this way, I feel short of breath, I feel I have chest pain, I don't feel good. And I have to figure out what's wrong with them based on what their experience is, based on what I find when I examine them, based on, on the tests that I do. And I have to put everything together and figure out what's wrong. I knew that I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to help people. I didn't know what kind of doctor I wanted to be. I just knew that I wanted to be involved in helping someone to go through what I went through, which was a, a crisis, and I overcame it and then I was better, and I felt like I wanted to do that to other people. In third grade, I started limping. We went to a lot of different doctors, um, and finally someone came up with a diagnosis. It was a condition called leg calf perthes disease. I spent the next uh, three months in a full body cast. Um, one of months I was in the hospital, and the next two months I was at home. I had tutors coming to my house, but I, I essentially was away from school for that whole time. I had great uh, interactions with doctors and the nurses. I had tons of nurses coming to dress the wound and to take care of me every day. I think a lot of the experiences that I underwent during that time helped mold me to what I'm doing with my career. I was a good student, but not because I thought I was so smart, but I knew that I I had to re work really hard. I always try to sort of work harder than the smartest kids in the class and you know, I thought I did a pretty good job because of that. Well, when I, my first, the first courses you take in medical school, um, one of them is anatomy where you learn all about different parts of the body. Um, and then the other one, at least when I went to medical school, is, is called histology, which is essentially looking at the cells of the body and a normal liver cell looks a certain way and then an abnormal liver cell looks a different way because the colors look different. I just did not do well in that course. I couldn't get it. The teacher would put up slides on the board and I would look at it and say to myself, I don't see anything. And everyone else in the class was raising their hand saying, oh, that's this problem, that's that problem. And I looked at it and I was like, and it was very discouraging for me because up until then I'd always done well in school and I was always, you know, everyone said, oh, you're going to be doing great in medical school. And here I hit this wall where I just felt like I was the stupidest person in the class. I lost a lot of confidence then, a lot of confidence in myself as a student and, and someone who could be successful at something. I never really understood or thought, what, you know, what was wrong? Why wasn't I doing well in that course? And I just always said to myself, I probably just, um, not that smart. All of a sudden, something clicked in my brain. So one time when I went to the eye doctor with my father, he asked the eye doctor to test me for color blindness. And there's a specific test for that. You have to be able to figure out numbers within circles. And I looked at 10 pages of circles and said, there are no numbers in there. And the truth was that I just lacked the ability to discern the different colors. But I was colorblind. There are other things that are chemical problems that people have, but people just blame themselves and their inability and just call themselves stupid or unable or incompetent, whereas they just maybe have some kind of learning disability. And if people knew about them, they could then try to get them over that. A person has to 
try to reach out to someone if they are struggling to do something, whether it's a teacher or a mentor in school or a parent, and not feel embarrassed about expressing your weaknesses to another person that could possibly help you. And anyone surrounding you, certainly in school, is ultimately there to help you, and they want to be able to help you. And you have to be able to try to um, ask their help if you need it.